Good evening. I'd like to thank the uh, Instructional Course Committee for allowing me to present tonight. These are my disclosures, none of which are germane to this presentation. C5 palsy um, is a post-operative complication of cervical decompression surgery, and it's described as paresis of either the deltoid or the biceps of at least one grade on manual muscle testing compared to the preoperative condition. It was described by Keegan first in 1965. 50% of the uh, individuals will also have pain and sensory deficits in C5 dermatome, and it can present from the day of surgery until four weeks post-op. The timing typically is quicker uh, with anterior procedures compared to posterior procedures. Overall, in a meta-analysis, um, they found an overall rate of C5 palsy in cervical procedures of 6.3%, highest in laminectomy infusion, lowest, interestingly, in laminoplasty. This uh, series of 1,000 patients showed um, that improvement in anterior procedures occurs um, in 75% of the patients in six months compared to post here, or approximately 86%. This looked at uh, the disease process uh, and the type of surgery. They found that OPLL had a higher rate of C5 palsy in anterior procedures as well as laminoplasty. Um, CSM surgeries were fairly, uh, a little bit lower than OPLL. And in laminectomy infusion, both OPLL and CSM had approximately the same rate. 25% of the patients had bilateral involvement uh, in their process. This study looked at anterior lesion and how much canal was occupied. If it was greater than 50%, there was a much higher rate of C5 palsy. Then looking at the anatomy, uh, the C5 roots are the shortest, so tethering could be a factor. And also the C5 root after decompression had the longest horizontal distance from the medial margin of the disc, from the root to the disc, allowing more strain with core drift back. The etiology, uh, again, could be tethering due to foraminal stenosis, the posterior drift back, cord ischemia or reperfusion injury posited by Chiba, uh, thermal nerve injury with burring and uh, preoperative malrotation of the cord. Um, in root involvement, there can be trauma with instrumentation, iatrogenic foraminal stenosis or tethering with cord shift. Um, as far as the cord is concerned, there could be a segmental cord disorder with a high intensity zone expanding at, at C3, 4, and C4, 5 after surgery. There can be cord ischemia um, and decrease C5 radicular artery supply or the reperfusion injury. Foraminal stenosis, looking at a multi-center study with laminoplasty, they looked at a matched cohort of patients and they found that the neuroforamen was smaller than the C5 palsy patients. There was a larger uh, superior articular process in C5 palsy patients and a greater drift back in these patients. Differential diagnosis, brachial plexopathy due to shoulder taping um, can be a concern. Monitoring can usually pick this up. Parsonage Turner is also another um, possibility in the differential diagnosis. Let's look at risk factors in a meta-analysis. Age can play a factor, a little bit higher rate in men. OPLL, as we mentioned, foraminal stenosis, the type of procedure, and interestingly, uh, open door laminoplasty versus French door um, has a higher rate. And then if you see um, that cervical laminar angle or high intensity zone, there's some correlation here as well. There's a Pavlov ratio of less than 0.65, there's a higher rate of C5 palsy. And then looking at the uh, cord laminar angle, if it's greater than 37 degrees, there's an increased risk of C5 palsy after decompression. Risk factors with corpectomy include the degree of myelopathy, age, kyphosis, and how wide the decompression is. A narrower decompression had a lower rate of C5 palsy. This looked at uh, a multivariate analysis uh, with laminoplasty and C5 palsy. Again, a higher rate in open door laminoplasty. Other factors um, include high intensity zone, cord inclination, uh, superior articular process did not play a role. Um, OPLL was a greater risk factor. 
And this looked at prognosis. Uh, there's less recovery if the manual motor testing is less than or equal to two, much higher if it's three to four, and recovery um, is longer if the deficit is worse. And this looked at final follow-up, as you can see, this is not a benign process with persistent pain and motor weakness occurring. Um, neurophysiological monitoring, um, this can pick up changes and allow you to address the pathology. However, delayed CFI palsy, you're not going to have any changes there. And this looked at, uh, if you saw spontaneous uh, activity with the vote, with um, free run EMGs and then modified the technique of the surgery, there were no um, C5 palsies postoperatively. Laminoplasty with high speed burring, um, they compared room temperature irrigation to chilled irrigation and found a overall rate of 9.5% um, with regular irrigation compared to the chilled irrigation of 4%. And then um, laminectomy, if it's a little bit narrower, no more than two millimeters wider than the cord width, uh, you had a much lower rate than with a wider laminectomy. Then, so strategies to minimize this condition, awareness is, the, is number one, especially with OPLL, cord rotation, and age. Laminoplasty um, can minimize this compared to laminectomy infusion. French door is uh, lower than the open door laminoplasty. So perform adequate decompression, but avoid uh, wide decompression um, at uninvolved levels. Uh, respond to monitoring changes. Consider foraminotomies at C4-5. Uh, chilled irrigation with burring can help and possibly corticosteroids. So with treatment, um, consider an urgent imaging study to rule out reversible causes. Um, this would include hardware displacement, graft displacement, or instability, um, ipsilateral foraminal stenosis, and consider foraminotomy for severe pain and manual muscle testing of less than or equal to two. And then uh, for patients that have tolerable pain um, and manual muscle testing of three to four to consider physical therapy and observation in this cohort. And there's no clinical reference for these recommendations. So again, thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to present this information.